All right, guys, now let's talk about ostomies. So there's a few different patients that we've already talked about that might be at risk or need an ostomy. Um, but pretty much what an ostomy is, and when we're talking about here, we're talking about like, you know, um, usually intestinal ostomies because you can have ostomies different places. Um, but an ostomy is usually placed after someone's had a bowel resection or part of their bowel cut out. Um, and we sometimes use these to for like an alternative pathway for stool. Um, there's other times that we talked about, we talked about if people are having like really incessant diarrhea, um, we can end up putting them on um, or getting them an ostomy to decrease their skin breakdown. Uh, and then we just talked about an inflammatory bowel, how it can be used um, because eventually what happens is the bowels are too short. Um, and, um, you know, that might be cancer, trauma, or in the inflammation, or because again of skin issues that we end up placing like pretty much a way for stool to come out. That's an alternative way. Um, the other reason someone might have an ostomy um, is because of blockages or holes in the bowels, like a fistula. So this is sometimes what they'll do is, is that they will place an ostomy before the fistula. And then um, that allows where there's going to um, any stool or stuff will come out that. Um, and so food and other stuff is not getting to that fistula and causing more leakage from the fistula. And so pretty much uh, an opening is created from the intestines through the abdomen and a pouch is applied usually. Some of these do not have pouches. Now, don't get too, you know, losing your minds about all these different types of ostomies. You're not, you're not going to be placing these ostomies or um, giving these ostomies to a patient. Uh, but what you want to uh, think about when it comes to um, what do you call these understanding ostomies? You do want to know the difference between a colostomy and an ileostomy, what's coming out. Um, and just some of the generals here, like some of these are like their continent pouches where you have to catheterize yourself. And we'll talk about that, but, um, it's a little different. Um, but just know, we're not going to give you some crazy question on the exam. That's like, well, it's a double barreled. What's different? Like, I mean, it, it's, we're not gonna give you a picture either and say like, well, is this, this, or, um, this type of, um, you know, ostomy or this type, it's more just knowing, hey, me as the nurse, how is them having an ileostomy going to affect my care versus a colostomy, stuff like that. Um, so ostomies can be temporary or permanent. Some of them can be reversed. Um, an ileostomy, like I said, this is the big thing, ileostomy versus colostomy. An ileostomy is in your ileum, which is your small intestine. So at this point, you haven't um, had as much absorption of nutrients, and you also haven't, um, you're not in the point of the, um, in the bowels where stool is very formed. So um, if someone has an ilio, uh, ilio, oh my God, Jesus, save me. All right ileostomy, I can talk. If they have one of those, um, they're going to have more liquid stool um, because of the location of where it is in the bowels. And so you're going to think about, okay, this is going to definitely have an effect on my care because if someone's having very liquid stools, I'm going to have different concern than if it's more formed. So with the colostomy, this is one, um, one that's in the colon and it can be in the ascending, the transverse or the descending colon. And, um, you know, with all these, that's going to usually be more formed of stool. And then there's also different types of ostomies. There's what's known as a Coke pouch or an ileal reservoir. It's amazing how I could say so like words like that. And then I'm stuttering with like the word the, um, but yeah, this is my life. It's like a constant joke. Um, an end ostomy, a loop ostomy or double barreled. So to kind of give you a visualization of some of these, again, you don't need to know them in depth, um, but like the Coke pouch, um, what you do with this one is it, it creates a pouch inside so you don't have to wear a bag on the outside and then you stick this tube in to drain it every um, so many hours. Uh, then there is a loop colostomy and a loop. They literally make a loop of bowel and then they put two holes at the top. One is for stool, one's for mucus drainage. This one, it looks like a loop, except it's not an actual loop of bowel. It's like two separate pieces of bowels that um, there. So there's two um, stomas effectively at the top, um, two separate pieces. And then this is an end colostomy in this picture where um, this is something that we can sometimes do if we want to later reattach and stuff bowel. Um, so, but the stoma is here. It's called an end colostomy because we leave the end in or we leave the rectum in. So the thing that you really want to focus on is what are my assessments? What's my care of a patient with an ostomy? So a patient that has an ostomy, their stoma should um, have a certain color and should be uh, looking a certain amount when it comes to swelling. And then also hopefully 
um, not have a lot of bleeding, but let's kind of break each one of these downs. So when it comes to a stoma, a stoma should usually be a rose or brick red color um, is what we would be hoping for. Um, it's, if it's pale, if it's dusky, brown or black, that's gonna be a sign of poor perfusion. Cause remember this is bowel tissue. So if it's getting like, you know, black or dark or things like that, like these bottom pictures, um, I'm gonna be uh, a lot more concerned. Um, about perfusion to the bowels or that there's dead bowel. Um, when it comes to edema, normally immediately postoperatively, they might have some mild, maybe moderate edema, but once it starts getting more severe, it can indicate that there's an obstruction, um, some sort of allergy going on or gastroenteritis, um, like an inflammation in the bowels, like um, think of the like food poisoning kind of thing. Um, then also bleeding, small amount is normal when the stomach is touched because of vascularity, but if there's a moderate or large amount, we're going to be concerned about GI bleed or some sort of coagulation or liver problems. All right, so let's do some teaching true or false. So for each of the statements, we want to say whether it's true or false for a client who's awaiting ostomy surgery and requires teaching. So is it true or false that they should empty their bag when it is two thirds full? Hmm, this sounds pretty reasonable, but believe it or not, we actually like them to empty the bag when it's one third full. We do not want these bags to overfill. We don't want anything popping. We do not want them um, to wait too long to fill them up, or to empty them, excuse me. Um, so this one is false. Um, number two, when with an ileostomy, you should always have an appliance on even when showering. So the ileostomy, that's the one that's liquid. Um, and so... Um, and you can maybe remember the liquid because the IL, think of the L in the ileostomy is the liquid stool. Um, it seems like this is actually really appropriate for them to um, have the appliance on uh, because if they're constantly leaking liquid stool, I don't think we would ever want them to take their bag off. Otherwise, they're going to be leaking stool everywhere. All right. So then three, you should limit fluid. So this, um, so this one, I'm going to say true. So false, true. Um, you should limit fluid as it will increase your output. Hmm. So if this patient, um, you know, is having stool, like I would think I would want them to drink fluid. Well, I mean, of course this patient's having stool. Every patient has stool, but I guess if this patient, cause I think with like the ileostomy, they're losing a lot of like liquid. Um, I would think we would actually want to like increase their output or even regardless, you know, a lot of times these patients can have issues with constipation. I don't think that limiting fluid, I don't think we want to limit their output. I think we'd want them to have healthy bowel movements. So I'm gonna say that's false. You need to regular, uh, you will regularly need to burp or release your air from the bag. Well, as disgusting as this sounds, it is actually true. So um, these bags, just like stool can come out and, um, you know, as much as you'd like, you can um, try to tell yourself that you don't fart, everyone farts. And so just as we all need to fart, someone who has an ostomy also needs to fart, um, but um, the, that gas can build up. And so uh, we wanna make sure to be regularly burping the bag. What that means is, is like opening it to get that gas release. Um, just be careful, make sure you have something under it and just know it's going to smell really bad. So have some stuff nearby and try not to, um, you know, I try not to have the door wide open because it can definitely lead to some uh, uncomfortable smells. So that's going to be true. Change your appliance back every four to seven days or as needed. Um, so this is something that seems appropriate that we're going to um, need to change the bag, like, you know, just every so many days. Like it, it's not saying empty. And that's, I think the key there. It's not saying empty every four to seven days. It's saying change the appliance or bag every four to seven days. It also says as needed, because if there was a problem with it or anything else, we would change it more frequently. So I think that's true. Um, with a colostomy, you can go swimming without an appliance. So as much as it seems like, you know, hey, free willy, like, let's do this thing, um, you know, and just go with my um, stoma out swimming. Uh, this is the thing is, is it's not um, that's while people that have colostomies have more freedom, they don't have to wear their bag all the time, like they can get in the shower without their bag on and be okay. Um, uh, what do you call it? We really don't want to push. Uh, what do you call it? Um, well, well, one, uh, we don't want to be someone swimming in a swim pool. It's not, it's going to be really hard 
the chemicals are going to be really hard on the person's skin. So there's that consideration. Um, but there also is the chance of stool getting out. It's less chance than an ileostomy, but there's chance of stool getting out into that swimming pool. And we just don't want to risk that. So while they can do it in the privacy of their own shower, it should not be in a um, swimming pool. And again, I know that like, I know that those, the one, the ones of y'all that are sitting there and saying, well, we don't know if it's a private pool, you know, but um, I don't think anyone, even if it's their own private pool, want to poop in their own um, swimming pool. So the last one, um, so that is false. Um, the last one, you should have your first bowel movement within 24 hours of surgery. So this is another false in that um, it can take a few days for them. It can take sometimes two or three days for them to start having output from their ostomy. So let's see, false, um, true, false, true, true, false, false. So um, nursing focus for ostomies. This is what I was talking about when I said like it gets very um, inflated. This is not full of stool. This is full of a lot of air. Um, they can have very high output from ostomy. So I need to watch intake and output, electrolytes, worried about those dysrhythmias, that kind of stuff, worry about dehydration. Um, I want, to, like I said, it might take a few days to get output for these patients. I want to avoid things that cause diarrhea and gas. And I have a table on the next page um, that can help with that. Um, and then too much fiber equals too much loss of stool. Um, and so um, we want to stay away from high fiber diets, especially with ileostomies, um, because we want them to have regular stools, but we don't want them having so many that it's making things worse. So fluid is good, but we don't want too much fiber. Um, we're going to monitor their sodium and potassium a lot again because of those diarrhea-like losses. And then um, they're going to need to increase their fluid intake up to three liters per day. Um, and especially times when it's um, hot weather, diarrhea, excessive sweating, um, they may need to increase that even more. So this is um, the, the actual table number might not be up to date because I'm not sure if I updated that. Um, but overall, these are some ideas of some foods that we might want to stay away from, things that cause odor or gas um, or diarrhea. So staying away from that spicy, fatty, acidic, and then um, all the other good things in life here. So um, the other thing I'll say about ostomies is, is just, um, you know, the there's regular care or maintenance needed for the appliance and stuff itself. So we need to have an appropriate ostomy bag. There's a one piece bag, um, which is, um, uh, what do you call it, um, uh, where like it's all together, like in this bottom one in one. Um, and then there's a two piece bag. And then the benefit of these two piece bags is, is that you, um, you can just take the two piece bag and just throw it out. It's, um, you know, and so you don't have to change it constantly um, and things like that, but um, that is more expensive because you do have to pay for them. Um, and like I said, change every four to seven days, the whole bag at, or as needed. Um, empty the pouch when it's one third full. Um, what those with the ileostomy should not routinely take off the cover. And we want to monitor that stoma closely for perfusion. Uh, we should avoid heavy lifting with this patient uh, and um, or they should avoid heavy lifting. We don't want them straining. Um, like we talked about burping the bag and let them know that like having excessive gas is normal in the beginning. It's not always going to be that way. Uh, monitor that skin closely. Make sure they're being seen by a wound ostomy and continent stress. Maybe see, I think I thought it wound, what do they call it? In another video, I called it something else. Wound care and ostomy nurse. Yeah, that's probably why. So I was right. I had the right acronym. I'm not crazy. Um, but anyway, um, wound ostomy incontinence nurses can also help with, um, they can help with general wound stuff. They can also help with ostomies. Um, uh, they can do, they have, they have a very big rep repertoire and can help with a lot of issues. So don't be afraid to consult them, but specifically with ostomies, they need to come and give education, make sure the patient has the right supplies, properly fit them. Um, there's definitely stuff that we do as nurses, um, in this care, but they're going to be a crucial, have a crucial role in things too. And then just supporting the psychological health. This is a really hard transition for most people. Most people are like, cool, I got this ostomy. I'm adjusting. Wow. Everything's good. Like there's a psychological component. You're carrying your stool on the outside. There's embarrassment and things like that. And um, we actually kind of like with an amputation, you know, where we want them to start to be able to look at and be a part of their care. <laughs> it's the same here for ostomies where I'm going like a, like a positive outcome for their mental health would be for them to be able to look 
at their bag and change out the bag or change their, um, like get their supply set up where they're changing out the bag. Um, cause that's going to be a sign that they feel comfortable enough, like taking responsibility for that. Some people, when they're going through the process of grieving or loss, like when it comes to, when I say grieving and loss, I'm not talking about a family member, but let's say that um, you have inflammatory bowel disease and you end up needing an ostomy. There's kind of the grief and loss of your function that you have of, of needing now the um, colostomy or whatever it might be. And so um, just know that there's a big psychological component here. So we want to watch really closely and um, make sure that we're supporting people and um when it comes to taking ownership of their care, their, uh, you know, think, and then finding other people like them to help to see how did we make these transitions? How do we get more used to these um, routines that we now have with our ostomy? Um, but just know there's a big psychological component. Okay, the next topic will be hernias. See you for that one.